Hi, everyone, and welcome to another Facebook Live. Um, I'm your host, Jeff Palmer. I'm the CEO and founder of Claim Machine. And we are going to talk about use it or lose it. So this, this goes back to a common uh, generalized understanding in the scientific community and the medical community that uh, humans lose muscle over time. And according to this uh, research, this is actually not a, a brand new study. This, this study came out in 2011, but I think it's a really important study because I think it really kind of <laughs> pretty much crushes this false understanding that sarcopenia or age-related muscle decline, um, it, it has to do with actual aging. Um, Look, I'm 58 years of age. I'm, <laughs> I've got that, I'm maintaining the muscle I had when I'm 30. So where did they get this idea that you lose muscle uh, over time? Well, so let's, let's back up to, uh, to uh, sarcopenia or age-related muscle loss. I don't think it's age-related at all. And this study really kind of slam dunks that. Um, it actually shows... It looked at uh, adults who were regularly working out even into their senior years, and they found something completely different. So what they found was pretty startling. But let, before we jump into the study, I'm going to talk about um, what the assumptions were based on sarcopenia. Um, so the assumptions were that it's a natural part of aging, that you're going to lose muscle, guaranteed which we now know is false, that after the age of 30, you begin to lose as much as 3 to 5% of your muscle per decade. <laughs> that means over a couple of decades, you could lose a big chunk of your muscle, which we now know is not true, according to this new study too, as well, this more recent study. And that that most men, and this is this is direct quotes from the research, <laughs> that most men will lose about 30% of their muscle during their lifetime. I'm like, what? <laughs> I mean, my, my little N1 study, uh, it says that there's no way. And look, I have lots of friends who are in their 40s, 50s, even 60s, and still preserving similar types of muscle that they had uh, when they were much, much younger. Now, it's interesting, I was looking at a, another study and this study looked at young men and older men to see how their body's physiology differed in how they lose or maintain strength and muscle. So they had the two groups, young men and, and older men. And after two weeks of not moving at all, so they took the, the men <laughs> and they said, all right, you must lay down, we'll feed you, we'll take care of you, we'll do everything for you, but you must lay here for two weeks, right? Two, after two weeks of young men not, uh, not moving at all, they lost 17 ounces of muscle, over a pound of muscle in two weeks. Ouch. <laughs> so definitely use it or lose it stands true here. Um, if you're not using it, your body says, wait a minute, muscle uses up a lot of energy. So muscle is an expense on energy for our bodies. If you're not using it, our body will break down that muscle so that you're not using up your body's energy for something that you're not using. It's like when you walk out of a room, you turn off the light, right? Because you don't want to use that energy to light the room if there's no one there using it. The same with muscle. If you're not using it, your body will break it down and get rid of it. And it can bring it right back if, if you need if you need it. But it's not going to use something, keep something, or maintain something like muscle. It's not going to preserve it if you have no use for it. So a young man who is immobilized for two weeks loses muscular strength, catch this, to the equivalent of aging 40 to 50 years. <laughs> oh, my God. This is right on the study. A young person, right? After just two weeks of immobility, of not using his muscles, 
actually lost strength the equivalent of aging 40 to 50 years. If that's not use it or lose it, I don't know what is. Um, but these should have been indicators that it's about muscle use that causes the pre preservation, not muscle aging that's causing this decline in muscular strength or in, in the earlier case, actual muscle loss. Uh, and obviously if you're losing muscle, you're not gonna have as much strength, but even in the muscle that you do have, you have less strength because it's not being uh, fed or utilized properly. So uh, the study goes on to say that uh, in a relatively short period of time, young people lose about 30% of their muscular strength leaving them as someone as strong as someone decades older. Meanwhile, active older people who became sedentary for a couple of weeks only lost about 25% of their strength. So this is interesting. A younger person who stopped exercising for two weeks lost 30% of their strength. An older person in their 40s, 50s, 60s who stopped exercising only lost 25% of their strength. Why is that? <laughs> and this is where it gets interesting because our body, if you are doing something consistency, consistently over time, our body builds up that information. It says, hey, you're using this pretty consistently all the time. I'm not gonna break it down and destroy it as much as someone who is just now using it, a younger person who hasn't been using that muscle, hasn't been sending that signal to the muscle, hey, we need it maintained, hey, we need it maintained, exercising on a regular basis. So this is showing that regular exercise, consistent regular training over a longer period of time actually helps preserve muscle as you age. So this is saying just the opposite that if you're working out a longer period of time, over time, your body will maintain that shape much better and much more efficiently than somebody who's 20, 30 years younger than you are. How's that for cool? That's what the body is doing. The body is saying, hey, I've got a message that you've been constantly sending me, preserve muscle, build muscle, strengthen muscle for 30 years. Now, if you stop working out, I'm not gonna break that down as much because I think that's probably just a temporary stop. If you're younger, that's gonna be a much greater impact. You're gonna lose more muscle and you're gonna lose more strength and you're gonna do it a lot quicker. So this is telling me that the more you exercise over time, the more you actually can maintain and preserve that muscle for the whole length of your life. So this notion that we lose muscle and lose strength over time is based on how much we exercise in that time, not how old we are. It has nothing to do with the chronological age of a person. It has to do with how much exercise you've done in that time period. If you've been working out all your life and you stop working out. Now, here's something. I'm a little reticent to tell you this, but uh, during the pandemic in, in the 2020, um, uh, I, I stopped going to the gym because the risk was high. So um, I started working out with bands and I ended up losing about 15 pounds of muscle over 10 months, 10, 11 months. And I just got back in the gym more recently and I added all 15 pounds of muscle and almost back to that exact same strength I was at the end of there in six weeks, six weeks. And that's because I've been training for years. I've been training since I was in my early 20s when I was swimming. I started uh, lifting weights back then. And I've been training pretty consistently all the way to my age of 58. That consistency is helping me maintain the muscle. It's helping me maintain the strength and it's helping me bounce back even when I take 10 to 11 weeks off from serious weight training. I am back to the exact same weight I was when I started. Now, we stopped actually doing the uh, hypertrophy training with, with heavier weights. Now, that's amazing. That's how the body, if you train it on a consistent basis, will help you preserve that muscle. 
I'm going to go ahead and uh, put up the study now because this study is actually what got me really excited to do this um, post. I'm going to put it up in the chat box here. And then I'll pop it up on the screen there for everyone to see. So the study, uh, the name of the study kind of gives it away, but the title of the study is Chronic Exercise. That means consistent, regular exercise. Chronic exercise preserves lean muscle mass in masters athletes. That's athletes um, in their late 40s, 50s and higher. This study contradicts the common observation that muscle mass and strength decline as a function of aging alone. That was wrong. Instead, these declines may signal the effect of chronic disuse of your muscle, not exercising rather than muscle aging. It is not about age. It is important to get proper nutrition and it is important to consistently exercise, but it's not about age. Never say it's too late to start. It's never too late to start. And the more you are consistent, the more those results are going to last. The more it is easy for your body to recoup strength, recoup muscle gains, and maintain that muscle size for you as you age. So this whole kind of misassumption, even the name sarcopenia, which is age-related muscle loss, needs to be changed. They need a new definition because it has nothing to do with age. Now, there are some important things that you can do based upon the research. Again, this is not just me saying this, no bro science here. <laughs> it's all based on the studies. Um, they have shown that uh, protein intake may need to actually increase as you age. Now, I do have a theory about that. And trust me, this is just a theory. There are some research out there that suggests what I'm saying is correct, but I'm just going to call it what it is, my personal opinion. I think because average Americans are consuming way too much protein in their diet, specifically a standard American diet with high animal products, that they're hammering their cells with uh, signaling to grow, 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 yet they're sedentary. When you have a real strong signaling with tons of protein telling your body, grow some muscle, and then you're doing no exercise on this side, that's a miscommunication. And sooner or later, the body says, you're lying to me. You don't need all that protein because you're not really doing anything. You're not exercising. So I'm going to shut down some of these receptor sites. And then your body becomes less receptive to the protein that you're consuming. Over time, I believe similar effects that happen to insulin resistance. If you are hammering the body with sugars and you are not using the sugars, then those receptor sites on the cells will shut down and insulin uh, resistance is the body saying, no, I can't handle all that sugar. I don't need it. I don't, I can't use it. Right. And I think the same thing is happening by overconsumption of protein. Now, if you're exercising one, you're going to need the protein, regardless of whether you get it from food or supplements, doesn't matter. You will need that because the body depends on that protein. Um, but as you age, because this is this has been the, the standard of the diet for most Americans, as you age, they've shown that to maintain the muscle, you may have to increase the amount of protein in order to get that. Now, I think there may be actually a better way of approaching that, and that is branch chain amino acids. So leucine, which is one of the three branch chain amino acids, is actually shown to do this cell signaling. It binds to the outside of the cell, and leucine gets the body to pull the essential amino acids that are in the bloodstream into the cells to create muscle protein synthesis. So instead of just keep increasing your protein levels, what if you just increased your leucine levels? That's the key signaler. And that has been shown to actually not only halt, but reverse in some cases, sarcopenia, the age-related muscle, <laughs> age muscle loss, no, just muscle loss from misuse. So 
instead of eating a whole bunch more protein as you age, if you're getting up in 50 to 60 years, you can have to keep raising your protein. Instead of doing that, you could simply, and, and of course, adding all that protein from food means you're adding more calories. And as you age, you may not need as many calories. Actually, you should probably decline in your total calorie consumption. So just by simply adding the branch chains back, you don't have to add all those protein calories back all that extra protein, you can simply just add the branch chains to your uh, uh, protein sources, and that can increase that and keep that muscle protein synthesis high. One study has showed that um, if you just took uh, leucine or, or branch chain amino acids and added about four grams, which is about a scoop of our branch chain amino acids, added it to an essential amino acid source, a protein source, it increased muscle protein synthesis by 33%. So that's where the key can come in. You can increase that level of protein absorption or accretion, the body bringing those essential amino acids in the cell to create muscle protein synthesis. You can increase that by simply adding the branch chains alone, which have little to no calories. And then instead of eating all that extra food to get the extra protein, that way you can keep your caloric levels in check that actually is shown to uh, increase longevity in human beings as well. So much better way to just increase the branch chain amino acids, keep your protein levels at a moderate level. And they've shown that um, very interesting studies show that those uh, those over uh, uh, over 60, actually, um, when they increased their protein intake, it had uh, almost no uh, negative impacts as far as health is concerned, no increase in uh, all-cause mortalities, which is great because uh, uh, study, the same study showed that uh, high animal protein intake uh, under the age of 60 actually did increase cancer, heart attack, stroke, and things like this. But after 60, not so much because the body actually needs more of it in order to reach that uh, sufficient protein synthesis. So that's an interesting thing. So obviously, as we age two, hormones can play an effect. So definitely you need to get your hormones checked. Um, and then if you have imbalances, uh, my suggestion strongly is to work with natural substances. There are plants out there that can really help you um, with your hormone balancing too as well to bring all of your hormones in check. Um, I don't like the approach of just boosting testosterone. Yes, testosterone is directly linked to muscle protein synthesis, but there are uh, four or five other hormones that are at play here. And if you just do one, you can upset the whole balance. That's why I designed cell block 80 um, to balance all five of those different pathways so that you get a nice optimal level without pushing your body into a levels where it would actually start creating negative side effects. So that's the healthy approach. Work with your body, get your body to elevate its own hormones, balance them out. That's the proper healthy way to approach this without causing or creating negative side effects that you see in some other products. Um, essential fatty acids are also important. So uh, I think a lot of people as they age kind of not so good with their diet and not getting uh, the proper amounts of essential fatty acids. So what does essential fatty acids have to do with muscle? Well, great study showed that um, uh, an omega-3 EPA, um, EPA is shown to be used inside the muscle cells for the mTOR pathway to create muscle protein synthesis. So they showed getting the optimal levels of EPA inside the muscle cells increased muscle protein synthesis by 25%. That's as good as creatine. Now, who knew that essential fatty acids, specifically omega-3 EPA, is important for muscle? <laughs> that's exactly what it is. And that's why I went out and found uh, ahi flour. Uh, ahi flour is, is shown to be the highest conversion rate, four times higher than flax at converting to EPA because EPA is so important for um, muscle protein synthesis. So you've got your protein levels uh, need to uh, be a little uh, upped. Branch chain levels uh, increase those slightly. Make sure your hormones are in balance. Your essential fatty acids, your especially your omega-3 EPA, real important for muscle protein synthesis to preserve that muscle. And then, of course, regular exercise. But not just regular, consistent exercise. So 
my three my three tenants you've probably heard it before if you've seen any of my videos is intensity train with intensity put a lot into it because that's what really stimulates the, the body to maintain strength and muscle consistency which is training regularly just like this study showed that it's the consistent training chronic training even all the way through your uh, later years in life that's what helps preserve the strength that's what helps preserve the muscle and importantly overall health and cellular function um but three is nutrient density so getting all that nutrition that i was talking about Make sure you're getting enough fiber, essential fatty acids, and essential amino acids too as well. But adaptive training is a style of training that I incorporate, that I, I strongly suggest, especially if you're 40 plus years of age. Adaptive training is regularly changing up your workouts, maybe a heavy training for two weeks using a little bit heavier weights um, and lower reps. Like I do right now, I'm doing uh, some heavy training for about two weeks and uh i stair step it so i build it up throughout my workout so that my muscles warm up and adjust to it and i reach my peak and then stair step it back down often called pyramids so this is one type of two weeks of training and then i'll move to super slows super slows is taking that muscle and contracting it on a three count and then deep uh extending it on a three count super slows are killer you will walk out shaking you'll burn more calories it's amazing training and then i'll do supersets where i'm doing a, almost a fi only 15 seconds of rest in between and combining two like a, a, a converse training like i'll do biceps and triceps like i'll do curls at once and then tricep pushes at the at the uh, after 15 seconds this is called a superset. So you're combining two exercises, one almost right up on top of each other, and you're super fatiguing the muscle or stressing the muscle. So there's lots of different ways you can stress the muscle. You can stress the muscle with the tempo of your workout. You can stress the muscle with the weight of your workout. You can stress the muscle with the volume of your workout. So I do another thing called 10 by 10s, which is 10 sets of 10 reps per exercise. So I can end up walking out with a thousand reps in, in one exercise session. So that is volume training, also called German volume training, but volume training, you're just adding a lot of volume of the reps. And that's another way to super uh, cause super compensation. So your body has to really adapt to these different styles of training on a regular basis. By changing this up every two to three weeks, maybe three to four weeks, if uh, you're a little bit older, this allows the body to constantly be kind of adapting, adjusting to what you're throwing at it. And this will keep you stronger, will keep you healthier, will keep your joints healthier too for a lot longer so that you can enjoy this muscle strength and this muscle maintenance and overall health throughout your whole life. It is not about aging. It is about nutrition, the way you exercise, and the uh, length and, and consistency of your exercise. So intensity, nutrition, density, and consistency. If you keep with those three tenets, you'll get the most out of your workouts, and you can train <laughs> way into your 60s uh, without any issues and enjoy your life drug-free, and um, obviously the plants will definitely help to help heal and repair, help with recovery and make sure you're getting that nutrition in. Whether you choose to do it with whole food, um, the challenge with whole food is, is really trying to get in all the types of micro and macronutrients without over consuming food. And then of course there is uh, the proper types of nutrients that you need. So I like using some supplements to make sure I'm meeting my nutritional needs for my health, for my body, but also not adding a whole lot of calories or a whole lot of food. I mean, I tried uh, you know, sometimes uh, on, on doing my gain sessions during completely whole food, and I walked around with a balloon belly most of the time just because the high amount of water, fiber, and bulk that is generally in a vegan diet. So this is where I think supplements can be helpful. Um, so that you don't walk around like you're looking uh, three to four months pregnant <laughs> and, uh, and you get to enjoy foods and you get to enjoy things at a more comfortable and regular basis. 
I hope you enjoyed this one, and I hope you understand that this study shows it does not have anything to do with your age. So regardless of what age you are, stay consistent in your training, and you'll be able to enjoy this over a good, long, healthy time. Thanks, everyone. We'll talk to you next time.